Hello, just a quick spoiler warning about this Far Cry 3 show. We don't go into enormous detail, although we do talk about a couple of characters and missions, but it won't affect your understanding of the game as a whole, the arc, or how the game ends. We talk about a gadget that you receive, but it's important enough to be worth mentioning and when we recorded none of us had read an interview with the writer the game's writer that has since become popular and so we're not kind of tainted by his opinion on what the game is and how people should approach it it's a very free-form discussion there's a bit of swearing so just bear that in mind hello you are listening to the hatchetjob.com gaming netcast and i'll just make sure that i'm recording because it is one o'clock in the morning uk time and i try to get some sleep before recording with these fine gentlemen and gentlemen that include us implicitly good evening starts good morning good morning lupus umbrus hello and skeleton frames yo there's a lot of us here and a lot of us here and we we're all going to talk about far cry 3 but uh the reason I'm a bit under the weather is because I, I finally finished the story mode today. And also my, my gay neighbours were having a very vigorous game of ping pong, which, <laughs> which, which happened while I was trying to get to sleep. But, you know, fair play to them. If only I was playing ping pong with somebody rather than discussing video games on the internet, <laughs> which I think <laughs> is... That's, uh, that's the true mark of a podcaster. So, gentlemen, I have a question that is themed in the vein of Far Cry 3. Lots of animals in Far Cry 3. Uh, that you can kill and which kill uh, NPCs and also try and attack you at the same time. So my animal-themed question is, if you could communicate fully with any one type of animal, what animal would it be and why? Now, Sim, we discussed this previously, and can you remember what your answer was? No, I have no idea what my previous answer was. I can't imagine it wasn't cassowary, because they are clearly the the rising stars of video games and they should feature in more games in future because they really are vindictive violent and uh, like a, a they have a mob mentality where they gang up and kill anything that they come across i think you better describe what a cassowary is to the people that perhaps haven't played oh it's like a giant blue-headed psychotic turkey <laughs> yeah the, the size the size <laughs> of a man the size I of a shot man one in the game i thought it was an ostrich there was this guy about to attack me, and then I saw this shape come out of the jungle, and I, and I thought it was a bear, and then I then I saw him being pecked to death, which <laughs> <laughs> which isn't brilliant. Um, so Sim, you would choose a cassowary. Yes. Yes. Uh, starts. What would your animal be? It doesn't have to be a Far Cry Three animal. <laughs> That's good because I, you haven't played it, of so course. I'll, yes. No, I haven't played it. Um, no. I can be any animal. Is this is this true? No, you can talk to any animal, but only one sort. Talk. Yes, you can have a you can, you can uh, understand fully. You can speak this animal's language. A cockroach. A cockroach. Of Interesting. Course. Why? A cockroach. Right. Well, a cockroach gets around. Right. I mean, a cockroach sees a lot of things that that other animals do not see. Right. I mean, if you talk to this giant blue-headed ostrich, you're basically just you're you're just talking to something that's killing you, which you could probably get elsewhere. A cockroach, I think, would be very useful. So you'd go to it for kind of advice on the best kitchens right, to hang like, around? Like yeah, this, yeah the, the best kitchen. Where is the best smelly, moldy cheese behind the fridge? It really is kind of a, a recession insect, isn't it? It knows the best places to go. <laughs> That's right. It's from all those years of being a graduate student, just <laughs> foraging for food. That's really what, my, what drives me. Right. Uh, lupus, <laughs> what would your animal be and why? At least uh, as far as the Far Cry animals go... Maybe the bears. Seems like they've seen some shit. <laughs> kind of want to get their story. Do you have a thousand yard bear stare? Is that you just they just see them in the forest looking at nothing? <laughs> I just like how this plays in with the ping pong reference from earlier. <laughs> you want to play ping pong with some bears? <laughs> some. It's a rough game. That's a whole separate genre of pornography, and uh, it's good for them. Okay, good. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> You've just. You've just uh, and and, uh, and skeleton frames. Your animal, yes, and why? Oh, I don't know. Um, platypus. Really? It'd probably be the funniest animal. I mean, look at the thing. <laughs> He's got to have a sense is, of yeah. humor. Humor is a defense mechanism, absolutely. Yeah, I feel like I'm the platypus of the human world. All sorts of wrong pieces put together. That's the worst dating profile I've read in a while. <laughs> Uh, come um, on, you click, excuse right? me, ping pong bear. I'm the platypus of the human world. <laughs> <laughs> ping pong bear. It just waiting to be discovered in some kind of Chinese jungle. They're going to announce it. 
<laughs> they're going to have great difficulty breeding them. But when they do, they can send them to, to the Olympics. Kind of like a panda. I see a new show for History Channel, Searching for Ping Pong Bear. On the subject of animals, it's kind of interesting that you said panda sim. Because, and obviously this is going to be completely free from discussion about the game, but we will let you know if there are going to be spoilers. Of course, we will, we will do that. I was trying to figure out what animals it would be acceptable to kill and, and what wouldn't, because the game has leopards and tigers and sharks, and uh, th there's a chap on uh, a forum I go to, unfortunately I can't remember his name, but he said that... Ping pong bear. <laughs> ping pong bear. <laughs> but he said that he wasn't going to kill tigers or sharks in the game because they are actually endangered species, and he didn't feel right about doing it. I have news for him. Right. These, uh, these aren't real. Well, he's killing people through the game. I mean, right? Just for no fucking reason at all. Just driving over people for fun, right? I mean, this is how these games are played. But he draws the line at fake tigers. <laughs> yes. The way the crafting works in the game is uh, you start off and you can carry a certain amount of ammo and arrows and grenades and whatever it is and, and one weapon. And if you want to be able to carry more ammo or more grenades or more weapons, you have to complete quests which are either killing specific animals or killing animals in the game world and uh, then skinning them and using their leather to make ammo patches and so on. So some of the things in the game that I needed were from what I suppose would be now endangered animals. I didn't kill any tigers. Why? Because I like cats, and I find I find it difficult to kill them. Now, I, I, that's that is a bit of a lie. I did kill some leopards, and I did kill a tiger as part of a quest. But in the open world, what I try to do is get other animals or NPCs to kill tigers for me because I needed their skin. <laughs> I, 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 right, because you need that tiger is, this skin. This is morally yeah, okay, is it? Yeah, this is. Hey, I, I didn't kill it. I know it's nonsensical, Sim, but that was m kind of my concession to the idea that I wasn't happy killing these animals. Clearly, you didn't, you didn't care. That kind of didn't come into what you thought about it. Well, I did shoot a monkey and kind of felt bad afterwards. You could, you could put that on the back of the extras DVD as a quote, I think. I killed a monkey and felt bad about it. <laughs> no, as, as previously pointed out, you do spend quite a lot of the game sneaking up behind people and thrusting machetes through their chests from their spines. So the disjoint bit for me is that so when I played Grand Theft Auto, there were, there were moments in which you're like, I don't really want to beat a hooker for money. I'm just going to keep going and do something else. But in the scope of things, killing people that are, are mobsters and beating a hooker for money, I think beating a hooker for money is worse, right? Killing an animal and just all these other people you kill, there just has to be this giant blind spot where you say, okay, I like animals. But So you felt like this then? I did, but it also it made the game more interesting. I was using uh, the animals as kind of heat-seeking missiles with very bad targeting software because I'd get them running towards some enemies and then the leopard would see a pig and then peel off. What I realised I should have done is that there's a... In the game you can get syringes and syringes uh, you build or you create from picking up plants in the game world and the syringes have passive abilities. So some of them might, for example, one type will give you more health, others will allow you to sprint for longer or die for longer. There's one type of syringe called animal repellent which, when, when an animal is attacking you, you, you inject yourself with this and it, and it runs off, okay? It won't attack you anymore. So most of the time, I only used them when I was hunt, doing hunting quests because it kind of broke it, because you could, you could just go to an animal into attacking you, you'd pop the syringe, it would just stand there and you could shoot it. But there was one occasion when I, a bear was attacking me as I was scouting out an outpost... I was backing off, I used a syringe, and the bear then ran into the outpost because that's where the, the targets were for it, because I wasn't the target anymore, and started killing people inside it. So it seems to me that there's kind of an interesting question here, which is uh, you're, you're missing on playing with the simulation in a different way if you just kill whatever you see. Oh, I know. Certainly didn't come across everything and kill them, and, and had many instances of... Uh you know, herding cassowaries into outposts and, and so on, uh, purely for the comedy value. I mean, I've, I've yeah, avoided killing animals to uh, uh, some extent, but uh, yeah, I've done similar where I've used the, the little rock throwing thing you can do. Uh, animals are sometimes attracted to that as well as NPCs. Uh, so you can lure a, a tiger or something into a camp and watch the fun ensue. 
I've got lots to say about the differences between two and three, but I don't know if they're too kind of in depth and too specific. I have I have one question about the difference. Can I? Is this a good point? Since this is just a train wreck of ideas. In Far Cry Two, there was sort of like I thought there was a very subtle message in the game, right? So as you're playing the game. The reason I stopped playing is because when you play every 50 meters or 75 yeah. meters is a checkpoint, right? Like, like it's not even a high density area, but there are checkpoints everywhere. It's like yeah. East German Berlin or something. <laughs> and after you kill them, they will immediately be restaffed. You go away and they'll come back, which I thought was a very subtle message on overpopulation in Africa. Are you being serious? Which I thought <laughs> it was very clever of the gate. No, I'm not being serious. And so <laughs> I was curious. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was a stupid mechanic, and that's why I stopped playing. But this is the only only way I could reconcile this with everyone loving this game is that everyone else must have interpreted it as a subtle message on on overpopulation in Africa and the conscription of child soldiers. What is the subtle message in Far Cry Three? Use condoms? I mean, is that what they're going like? Is this, no, no, is this no, the no. Uh, surely the subtle message in Far Cry Three is that there's a big market for psychopathic tourism. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. No, you, you can drop drop really um, excitable, uh, you know, full on can do kind of guys into uh, into relatively quiet areas and give them guns. And like it's it's even better than uh, than parachute driving, jet skiing, and all that kind of stuff. Like the the a slightly more extreme sport is uh, letting you loose on the tribes people with any weapons you can get your hands on. So. I think we've been playing different games. So, starts. Did you understand what Far Cry 2's message was or not? Because there is actually one. No, I did not. Okay, Far Cry 2 is all about uh, the international arms trade, and uh, and the tra- trade and sale of weapons and conflict diamonds and blood diamonds. And when you watch Far Cry, uh, sorry, when you play Far Cry 2, and then you watch documentaries about uh, uh, a civil conflict in in Africa or child soldiers or the arms trade it all feeds back into your understanding of the game, right? And so it fits into this concept, an important concept in the real world. There is nothing in Far Cry 3 that really does that. As Sim says, it's effectively, you're a tosser who's dropped onto an island and then kills people. And there's a kind of a, a B-movie villain uh, who, who, who acts as the primary antagonist who's effectively just a cameo. And there's nonsense about drugs and so on. But but there's no overarching message and there's nothing really that that you can take away from that to understand more about the real world which i i thought was slightly weird because there are two important themes running in the game that i think could have been expanded one is the idea of pi- piracy because the main bad guys you're facing are pirates who are who are dealing drugs to the island but there is a real and 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 uh, notable problem with real world piracy which is somali pirates so that could have been an interesting topic to dis- to discuss or examine. The second one is the idea of drugs, uh, and and I did some research earlier that, and I found a suggestion that in Maori communities, so that's kind of New Zealand, and the, the guy, the, the friendly NPCs in Far Cry Three look like Maoris. I think in Maori communities they have uh, are twice as likely to become addicted to drugs or have alcohol problems than the kind of the the uh, the European or the the the, the non uh, the, the white population of New Zealand and this game could have hung a much more interesting discussion about those onto it because as you play the game you uh, and you loot bodies you also pick up syringes you'll hear guards talking about how they need another hit but you don't see this feed into any discussion of the of the rakyat populace the general people on the island and so to me that was a missed opportunity. If there was an underlying message to the game, it might actually get swamped by the UI, which is which is poor. And I don't want to kind of you know talk about the UI exclusively, but um, if there was an underlying moral message, then it would be really easy to tell what it was because it would kind of be flashed up in the top left of the screen the whole time. Yeah, um, my my experience of the game was good, f- pretty much because I like. I think we've discussed before, I just like games where I'm given a degree of freedom to mess around to my heart's content. And this this does that. It has elements of Red Dead Redemption, where you go around killing animals and skinning them with blood splatter on the screen. And it has elements of being able to approach complete strangers while peaceably going about their business in their outposts 
uh, and you know stabbing them through the neck or throwing knives at them and all that kind of stuff and and that that kind of stuff is enjoyable in in games obviously not in real life not in real life but i know lupus you're playing on pc uh me skeleton and sim are all playing on the xbox 360 but we we have all had and i've read n- numerous complaints about the interface so just for people who haven't played it who haven't seen videos essentially what happens is when you go into the world um there you're constantly being given information about xp as you would do in call of duty when you pick up new plants or you see new animals or you go to new areas you're you're prompted to go and look at the menu and then read an entry about this but the entry is entries are kind of facile and stupid for example it tells you what an ak-47 is everybody in the world knows what an ak-47 is and so the, these constant interruptions really make it very clear that you are in a video game as opposed to Far Cry 2, which was you are effectively in a mercenary simulator in Africa to some degree. I, I, I kind of don't really agree entirely with that because I think, I think you know you're in a game. and I, I completely agree with the UI um, criticisms because it is really intrusive and having to go into the actual game menu to perform game tasks like crafting items and, and upgrading the skills, it's, it's all completely counterintuitive and it doesn't work very well and there is lag in the menus and even on the 360 if you're you know there's a problem connecting to the far cry 3 servers you have to wait for a good minute before you can craft a potion so there i think there are real problems with it um but i don't think my problem with it is that it makes you aware of the fact you're playing a game why why are you connecting to servers to craft potions I've, uh, because when you press the start button just to go into the regular ah. ordinary game, menu, it pulls the game servers to to bring oh, sure, up stuff sure. about what your friends are doing, you know, what scores right. they've got in the challenges and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully, it doesn't show it on screen like in Sleeping Dogs. So it's not that you kill a pig and it says, simplicity has killed 17 pigs, you've only killed 16. <laughs> uh, 183. I would prefer if it did that. I want everybody to know I killed that one macaque. <laughs> That one, that one monkey. I couldn't find any others. So, so just a, as a tip, um, on the Xbox now, I've set up a pin code to make it more secure, or theoretically more secure. So, I, I, I've set up my Xbox so I don't log in automatically. I don't go to Xbox Live automatically. So I downloaded the patch, but otherwise I've been playing offline. And I don't think I've had as many delays as you, as you have had, Sim. Probably not. Um, so I, I'd recommend that. But Lupus, I mean, how do you feel about the the interface? Do you think that being constantly reminded that you have earned 10 xp for killing somebody or you have to go to this mission or you have collected uh, some item uh, is too video gamey or you don't really care about it or there are other is- other ui issues that concern you i don't mind too much except for how sort of intrusive it tends to be if it's like little text in the upper right hand corner or sort of at the edges of the screen in little boxes yeah uh, that's fine, but these boxes and whatnot tend to take up good chunks of real estate and will constantly remind you what the game <laughs> thinks you need to know. I enjoy like being able to drill down to read a codex entry or, or whatever they're called. Or I like how if you pick up some like dingo leather, let's say, and that lets you craft something, it has a little thing, and you can hit the button and you go right to that crafting entry. Uh, my biggest problem is that once you're in that menu getting back out to the game world takes backing out several times and you have to do this every single time and then getting back into something you want can be somewhat laborious it breaks the flow of yes. my usual gameplay yeah absolutely I, I completely agree with lupus there because what when you get those pop-ups saying oh you've discovered a, a new animal it is three or four levels down through the game menus and you have to press a button to come back up through each one i mean you can kind of mitigate it a bit by hitting one of the bumpers on the 360 and then coming back because that sort of takes you to an upper level menu but it's intrusive none of you mentioned the quick slot problem there aren't enough of them exactly so there are several types of syringes you get in the game and so because it's an open world game and it's simu- and it's a simulation you might need several of them in, in, in a row but you only have two quick slots on the d-pad which is left and down now when you assign these syringes you can see the other slots on the d-pad but they are reserved for items that you can't move so if effectively what the game is kind of asking you to do it, it's it's saying you have to plan what you're going to do in advance and use syringes then or if you want to have quick access to them you have to go through all these menus to to activate them which of course as lupus says completely spoils the flow of the game 
And to add insult to injury, when you go to the crafting screen, I'd estimate that the part of the screen you actually interact with to, 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 to craft items or to make syringes or to use them is uh, about 10% of the screen. The rest of it is effectively dedicated to a picture of the thing you're going to craft. Did none of you have a problem with the text in the, the codex entries? Um, the text as far as like the stupid jokes? Well, it's not that, you know, I didn't like the jokes. I just, they're not funny. Uh, they try to be funny. I read maybe three of them and I was like, oh, how many times can I groan at this game in a span of 20 minutes? So I stopped reading them. So I, I have a problem with the codex because uh, when you start the game, you're put into a hor horrific situation and you have to escape from a psychopath. Your first mission, you get this pop up from somebody saying, hello, I'm going to help you. He writes the codex entries, but the codex entries are full of mother-in-law jokes. And so you have this really... <laughs> It is. It's, you have this really fucking weird disconnect where you're totally freaked out. You're having to kill all these pirates and, and you kill an animal and it says, ah, oh, this, this lizard reminds me of my ex-wife. Ha, 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 ha. When, when you meet him, it all makes sense, though, because he's clearly fucked in the head. He is clearly fucked in the head, but there's no kind of coherent thread through the game about the narrative or what's going on. Or, For example, you're on an island full of uh, super hard Maori warriors who are tooled up they all have machine guns and fire bombs, and they've all got tattoos that give them mystical powers. But for some reason, you're the one who has to save the island. Did anyone have really high expectations of the Far Cry 3 story? Yes. Because of <laughs> 2, I guess. I think 3 has been designed, or at some point during its process, influenced by committee. And I think it's probably suffered as a result. But I, mm. I, you know, it's, none of that failed to stop me having a whale of a time. No, I mean, it's, it's an enjoyable game, but... Oh, it's, I, I agree. It's the, the game is unfortunately uneven, and there are some terrific parts, and it's fun to play, but there's other rocky parts that don't quite line up with each other. It, it, maybe it is along the lines, Sim said, it's sort of a design-by-committee syndrome. I do feel like the game has some sort of weird split personality disorder where there's kind of two different games here. And one of them I don't like so much, but then another one I love. Like I love just going and sneaking around and looking through my viewfinder at the uh, outposts and tagging everybody and just knowing that they don't know I'm out there in the woods and what I'm planning, like out there in the jungle, and that I'm about to start attacking them. And I get a great sense of just like power from that. Like I can... I can throw the first rock or do the first sniper shot whenever I want, and then shit's going to go down. And then there's the straight storyline. You're, you're locked into smaller areas. You know, if you walk about 30 feet to the right, it'll say you're out of the mission area, which just seems oh, yeah. completely absurd for a sandbox game. And I just completed all the missions with the, uh, the South African sounding dude who never buttons his shirt up. And all those <laughs> missions are pretty much just run through these tight corridors. And once I was done with his missions, I couldn't wait to just get out there and start playing the, the other game, the one that I like a lot more, of just going and sneaking around outposts and stuff. Anybody else annoyed by the car uh, controls and the camera? Hey, I love the car controls. Yeah, it's better than Test Drive Unlimited 2 by a long way. And that was a game about cars. <laughs> right. I agree completely. I was telling uh, someone earlier today that that Far Cry 3 somehow makes driving dirty and exciting in a way that Forza Horizon couldn't for me. Like Forza Horizon, the, it's a game about just driving cars, but it seems really sterile and too easy. And I like how in this one, yeah. I could just barrel over hills and it feels like it, it feels dangerous, like real driving would. It gives good handbrake. It really does. The handbraking is fantastic. But there's one car he always drives with one hand. You see, I imagine him leaning back, kind of hunched in the in the car, just like a toss pot. I mean, he is probably texting somebody or something with his other hand, or, or taking a photo of himself driving. Well, I've noticed that a lot of times you'll be turning the wheel, and you can see both of his hands, but then you can also hear him shifting gears also. <laughs> it's like, what, what is he uh, shifting no, that, that gear That was in two. That was in two. That's a, that's a legacy feature. <laughs> oh, okay. If you want to look behind you you have to hold the stick down and the camera turns all the way around to the right no 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 just press the right stick forwards no that's and, and it, it, you look all the way behind you does it really quickly yeah 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 fuck <laughs> does it 
Yeah. No, in this one, when you press the right stick forward, you just look up. No, 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 no. That's when you hold the right. No, no, you just just tip it forwards quickly, and it and, and you look over your right shoulder all the way back, 180 degrees. Well, 173 degrees. I, I'm sure I have to play. I think you're wrong there. I've I've I've, I've ex- right. I've experimented. Admittedly, I rented it, so I don't have the manual. Okay, then why can't I look over my left hand shoulder? Uh, because that's the hand you've got on the wheel. He woke up with a really bad crick in his neck. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, in just... Far Cry 2, I can look over my left shoulder. It's the, it's the tattoo. Oh, what about the lights? You can't turn your lights off in this one. I actually you don't notice. Know the lights that doesn't work either do you know why it's also interesting that you can't turn the lights off the unlike number two the game world is effectively kind of like a wedding cake because it's mountainous it's it's in lots of levels almost like uh, when you see uh, farms that are being cut into mountain sides and so in two you would turn your lights off because uh, the npcs couldn't see you at night when you drove and you'd stick to the outside of 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 the map in this one you can't stick the out, to the outside of the map because you're basically going off a cliff all the time so it's extremely funneled and so you don't have this sense of preparing for a mission of deciding that i'm going to turn my lights off and go into silent running and the same way you can't change the day and night cycle in this one which you could in two. So in two skeleton, you could go to a safe house and you could decide to sleep and you'd run the day and night cycle. And so you could go out at night to attack a camp when people would be less aware. And so the whole thing in that one was preparation. In this one, it's kind of just full pelt. And I'm getting a sense that if you wrote the tagline on the back of the Far Cry 3 box, it would be one sentence that said, play Far Cry 2. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I think this is actually... It's difficult to go back to Far Cry 2 because the controls are so awful. This does a lot more, and it's better value, and it has more going on, but it's just mixing those small points that, that change the experience, that make it kind of meaningful or, or give you a sense of atmosphere in some ways. Because, for example, um, when you're walking through plants, the plants don't flex. I think they probably had to compromise in a lot of places in order, given it's a console title, maybe this isn't fair on the, on the PC gamers, but they're probably... In order to achieve what they've done technically, because it is, you know... It, Apart from the frame rate, it's very impressive. It, yeah. So there's probably a lot of things they've had to leave out voluntarily. So it's a minor point, but in a game which is constant, consistently about stealth and about becoming part of the jungle, I think it's kind of an important omission. Oh, well, I did notice that the, the plants don't move, but there is one plant that does. Okay. Um, it's the one that looks like just giant leaves coming out of the ground. And sometimes it's pretty cool when someone hides behind it and you shoot and you could just see the whole thing shaking while you're shooting through there. The plant stealth is a feature of the game, isn't it? It's one of the uh, big hints it gives you the plastered all over the screen or saying, you know, if you stay still within the plants, then the enemies won't see you. The fact that they move or not in, in two, it, I don't think it has any effect on enemies' awareness of you kind of in the bush or you're not. But again, it's about atmosphere. Immersion. Yeah, immersion about putting you in the world. Um, and then, you know, going back to what you said, Skeleton, about the single-player missions, there's a mission where you have to use a flamethrower, right? Mm. Yes. Yeah? Did you use the flamethrower? I did at first, but it's a short-range weapon, and there was guys spotting me because, you know, you can't play stealth if you're using a fucking flamethrower. <laughs> 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 because as soon as you squeeze the trigger, you're setting a whole house up. I didn't use the flamethrower. But the NPC still said he's got a flamethrower. My character still referenced a flamethrower, and the guy I handed the quest into still mentioned a flamethrower. You were carrying one, though, right? No, I didn't even have one on me. I mean, oh. Like, there's a turret section. There are numerous turret sections. Why do you have a turret section in a Far Cry game? Uh, yeah, I, I think it does come back to the two-game theory. I like this theory. that there's, there's the one game that you're, in many ways, like Assassin's Creed, you're funneled through, uh, and your hand is held. And then there's the other game, which is... Which is um, the one that lets you get on with having your fun. Uh, what did you think of the um, of the takedowns? Because that really did remind me of Assassin's Creed. You can go up behind people and assassinate them, or you can assassinate them and throw a knife at their friend, or turn them into a bomb by pulling a grenade out on their belt, or pulling their pistol out and killing people in succession. Uh, yeah, there's clearly been some crossover here in the way that, that the, the whole takedown combat assassination thing works there's a couple of other things aren't there from assassin's creed which seem to have made their way in here like climbing up the uh, radio towers going back to the you know what skeleton said about allowing you to plan and plot your way around taking down outposts particularly uh, it works as a really good mechanic to allow you to almost chain kills together 
whether you've unlocked that particular skill or not. And I think um, there's been a number of things learned from the Assassin's Creed games, I think, that have made their way into Far Cry 3. And some of them work really well. In, in the skill tree that you can get, which gives you tattoos... Oh, you mean tatows? Tatow. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. Tatow. <laughs> it's a magic tattoo. It's a tatow. Tatow. <laughs> <laughs> That, I imagine that's a really bad Polynesian restaurant where you get a, a water and ink thing that you get, get on your hand when you when you eat there. Oh, like a henna tattoo? Yeah, like, like a henna tattoo, but that's your version of a Starbucks uh, loyalty card. That's right. <laughs> you know, wouldn't that be great, though? Do you, do you need another stamp for your coffee? Oh, fuck, really? Again? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't I masturbated it. in a week and a half. This is killing me here. <laughs> It really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and what's what is the guy's name that you meet at the very beginning of the game? Is it Dennis? Dennis. What's with him? <laughs> you're completely out. You're completely passed out. And he just decides he's going to start putting a tattoo on you while you sleep. Does anybody else notice that you wake up getting a tattoo? Yes. <laughs> Hello, sailor. You have had a long night. Yep. <laughs> What about the wallets? That you know, you have to craft packs to carry ammo and stuff. You have to keep on making fucking wallets. Larger and larger wallets, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because obviously their money doesn't fit in anything like a pocket or anything. Yeah. It only fits in a specific wallet made from tapir hides. We d- we decided, skeleton and me, that actually that's their version of inflation. So they don't have bills that go up in 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 monetary value. They just get bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier. <laughs> And actually, if you think about the size equals inflation model of currency, it explains a lot of ancient wonders. Easter Island inflation. <laughs> it's, it's actually in the center stood a 7-Eleven. Yes. <laughs> Stonehenge, the pyramids. <laughs> um, the thing that saves, <laughs> saves the game for me or really changes it, and this, this is kind of a, a spoiler in some ways, but it's, it's in trailers, is the wingsuit. I haven't got it yet. I, yeah, I haven't gotten there yet. So when you get to the second island, which is actually a different biome and fire spreads more quickly there, which is a peculiar decision, you get to the second island by using a wingsuit and you get a parachute. And so the wingsuit allows you to jump off a really quite small height. And so what this does is it, it kind of changes it because you're then in a kind of a YouTube extreme sports simulator. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I was in one from the beginning with the old cassowary herding in a Jeep. You know, <laughs> yeah. this is just an extension of my psychopathic holiday. Actually, this is the extremist of sports. We're hunting people. They should be Jean-Claude Van Damme DLC. <laughs> yes, hard target. <laughs> oh, yes. So nobody else liked the wingsuit. I loved it. Yeah, it's fantastic. Completely changes the, the transport around any hilled area, or, or as you say, you can pretty much trigger it by jumping off a curb. What I didn't like about the game is, because it's, in a, it's mountainous, it's in a series of steps, it felt really constrained when you're attacking bases. But, of course, that stepped formation makes perfect sense with the wingsuit, because everything becomes an escape point. But they only introduced the wingsuit, I think, about 70% of the way through. So to get it, you have to do all these 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 uh, missions, including the, the 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 corridor missions, like Skeleton said, to get at the fun bit. Uh, I'm trying to think what else what there is to talk about. Drugs. I don't know. <laughs> that was the first word that came to mind. <laughs> uh, I know it, it's a really good point. Drugs play a huge part in the game. Both, I mean, you kind of have first person drug experiences, and yeah, and other things, and it's um. You know, without making moral judgments about it, you know, from from my extreme holiday point of view, it you know it kind of blended <laughs> in quite well. But I could see how maybe you know if you were playing as a story game, then it, it, in some ways it was a bit of a cop out. But in other ways, you know, there there were ways where they, they it fed you a bit of backstory through drugs, and it gave you some information about the islanders through drugs. And uh, just about how drugs generally make everything really cool. Yeah, yeah actually, the, the gameplay parts that have impressed me so far are the ones that do involve some sort of psychedelics. Early on, you're going through a cave and, and come upon some mushrooms that alter your reality, I guess you could say. I found that rather impressive. That was the first part of the game where I thought they were maybe trying to do something different. Uh, yeah, yeah, I th- and I think that you return to this, you know, without kind of ruining anything further on. It, it is something that you return to later on. This this mode of operating in the game under a 
an altered state that's kind of enforced on you by the game. And I, you know, every time it happened, it, it did make me smile and I enjoyed it. And I think it's one of the things that improved my my enjoyment of the game, the whole drug side of it. In what way did it improve your enjoyment? Because for me, I mean, it was, it was nice to see. It was quite interesting. Um, but effectively, those sequences are all quick time events. Oh, yeah. You know, they were cool, but it didn't feed into kind of the larger part of the world. You had the psychotropic experience in those cutscenes, but at no other point in the game did you. So again, it felt kind of disconnected from the whole a bit. Well, the, it, it bled a little bit into some of the syringes you could make for yourself to give you, you know, enemy seeing powers and, and, and swimming powers and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I yeah, I agree that you couldn't take drugs to make wing gliding a more colourful proposition. They could release Pilot Wings syringe DLC. You just use it in the air and you just see all these rings floating in space and you have to go through them. There's scope there for that. Would you like to be able to, to shoot a pig with a hallucinogen? <laughs> in real life, yes. Why? That seems like, a, it seems like a waste of good hallucinogen. <laughs> right. Could, could we go first person inside the pig? <laughs> I, I did try to attach C4 to a tiger and a buffalo. <laughs> Um, but I couldn't. Oh, I was just thinking of, of attaching it to an animal and trying to lure them into a camp right, and then I thought, detonating I it. this is where you're going, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't just going to kill it. It was going to be like a, a weapon of sort. <laughs> you're going to use it like a World War II bunker dog? <laughs> just lace it up and send it in there. Uh, oh. I thought the crocodiles were really good in the game because you didn't see them often, but they made uh, crossing water feel dangerous every time. Yeah, the very first time I came across one, um, I had watched... A video of the game before I purchased it and I was there and my friend was sitting next to me and he and he was wondering why I was approaching the the swamp water so slowly but I was creeping creeping I was just uh, getting really close and then when I spotted it like I actually did see a crocodile and it was like this like wash of like like somebody hit me in the face with cold water I was like there's a crocodile and it was actually frightening yeah it I was really like, is how I'm oh, yeah. like going to get across this water um, because you know, like I said earlier, the animals are made out of armor. So you, <laughs> all I had at the time was a handgun. And I was like, how am I going to get across this water? So I just ran for it and got attacked by the crocodile. Didn't you see a crocodile kill an NPC as well? Yes. Later in the game, I had just done a side quest where there's there's like the side story missions that are just a one-off. You know, go right around this hill and finish this mission, then walk back to me. Those things. And uh, I had just got one. I didn't know that they were in the game. So I'm walking and I see an NPC just standing right next to a river. And I'm like, hey, you know, like maybe he'll give me a mission too. And I'm walking up to him and I get about 10 <clears throat> feet away from him and a crocodile just jumps out of the water, <laughs> takes the guy into the water and gone, just dead. <laughs> I, I had exactly the same thing happen with a, an enemy patrol of three people. And, and actually the first guy that was snapped by the uh, crocodile, it was really impressive because I, I was hiding from the patrol and they were coming to look for me. I'm sure they'd heard me throw a stone or something. And as they approached the riverside, a crocodile came out and took the first one and <laughs> ate him and killed him and disappeared underwater again. And I was really impressed by this. It was, it was slightly less impressive when the other two guys were like, hey, what, what's going on? We better go and investigate. <laughs> and the, 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 the second one was snapped by the crocodile into the river and then the third guy's like wow uh, what, what's going on i mean i, I obviously justified this because they're all on drugs so they weren't they weren't to know but then the third guy does exactly the same thing walks up to the riverside and, and the crocodile's eating them all which which was hilarious in its own way but it was it was a little bit immersion breaking I was uh, attacking this farmhouse and there was a big tree in a field. This guy walked towards a tree and then suddenly shot up into the air 30 feet. <laughs> and then he just, then he just kind of landed and went, and died. Did he have That's a wing not suit? a bug. That's a feature. <laughs> yes. It's a wingsuit. Right, so is this, uh, uh, listening to these descriptions, it sounds like animals are in Far Cry 3 what, what checkposts were, or checkpoints were in Far Cry 2, just entirely, unrealistically too common. Right? I mean, is it is this like walking around a zoo where somehow it all the doors is. have been unlocked? Yeah. Okay. You never know what you're going to get. That's the thing I like about it. Is, is it going to be uh, rebels fighting pirates or is it going to be cassowaries fighting bears? I mean, it's like a kind of game of top trumps where you, you know, you're, you're a spectator in who's, who's going to win. You know, how many, if you're going to get one tiger and a, a 
15 wildebeest or you're going to get three tigers a bear and four cassowaries and some rebels it's it really is fascinating I, i'm not sure what else there is to cover apart from stupid stories i think we've done a lot haven't we yeah, well, we could cover how this game probably has the most impressive watering eye effects I've seen. When your girlfriend Liza or Lisa is about to talk to you about something, and her eyes start glossing over like she's going to cry, and it really impressed me. <laughs> the, the characters you're supposed to save, really, I didn't feel any connection to them. I wanted to kill them all. Really? They, yeah. they don't really set them up very well, though, do they? Well, yeah, one's, one's a, a couple of them are black card, black credit card. Oh, American Express Black. Yeah, the unlimited funds people. I hear you about the rich kids, and I think it's why, you know, it just feeds into my, my ethos of, uh, of extreme tourism, because, it, <laughs> you know, only these people could really afford this kind of holiday where you hunt everything. There is actually a book we reviewed, which is on our YouTube channel, and our show is called The Dark Tourist by a comedian called Dom Jolly. And he went to Cambodia to see the killing fields. And uh, he, he heard a rumour that you could shoot a cow with an RPG. <laughs> so he, went, <laughs> so he went, to, went to find out if he could. And? He, he never got to do it. But he could if he played this. But he, he did go to Pripyat. There's no cows. He did go to Chernobyl. And walking around, he recognised it. And he recognised it from Call of Duty. And actually, the guide said to him, have you been here before? Which I think is a slightly unusual thing to say to somebody <laughs> touring the site of a nuclear accident. Have I got three arms? <laughs> so you come here often? Yeah. Jason does have three arms because he changes gear <laughs> with both hands on the steering wheel. Yeah. The thing that got me about his girlfriend was when you rescued them all by going on a just terrible killing spree. In my case, I was just blowing people's heads apart with a fifty calibre sniper rifle. And then she wants to have a discussion about a relationship. <laughs> I just thought, what, what kind of credulous... I mean, I, don't, I can't imagine somebody actually writing that and being serious about it. It's like every Women character... always want to talk about relationships. Just, <laughs> yeah. it's not, this is totally plausible. Every character in the game is so self-centered <laughs> that it's hard to care about anyone or anything except for the tigers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most relatable part of the game. Uh, and then when you rescue one of your friends, the first... And again, in this mission where you just go crazy, setting people on fire and shooting them and robbing families of their husbands, and you rescue him and he goes, dude, nice tats. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, and then the achievement pops, hands off my stoner. And I was just like, oh, that's a point where I wanted to turn the game off. But then I was I think, like, I'll just drive this car over one more hill. But I think the achievements were possibly written by the guys who did the, uh, the stuff in the codex, weren't they? I mean, it all is all that kind of groaning awfulness. Yeah. Like when you first meet Buck. Yeah. His name's yeah. Buck, and he likes stuff. <laughs> but it, oh, uh, really? My name's Skeleton, and I like to turn this game off. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know how you could have made them sympathetic. I think just killing them all, and you have to get your revenge, is probably... At, at the beginning of the end, they all die. Well, honestly, the game has a problem with kind of its finality like nothing seems really that dangerous because Vaz is supposed to be this awesome crazy guy he never successfully kills anybody I don't think <laughs> <laughs> like he's so dangerous but then you survive it's like a bad James Bond it's like awesome <laughs> powers almost I mean we, we obviously don't want to go too much into revealing all of the plot but the game addresses some of these issues uh, oh it does to, to some degree yeah not not in a satisfactory way but it it, it 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 talks about them it has a discussion with itself about it perhaps existentially don't play this for the plot and and, and even i'd have to say if you're if you are sensitive to frame rate issues or tearing don't play it either oh yeah i didn't find it too bad i mean i know there are frame rate issues but it never came to a stuttering halt for me and whilst i occasionally saw a bit of tearing and i know other people are way more sensitive to it than I am. I, you know, I think even the console version holds up pretty well. I'm not sure how to feel about this because I do enjoy playing it. Um, I'm concerned that when you kill enemy outposts in the game, which is kind of the enemy bases and the, you get fast travel points, that uh, they disappear and they won't ever be taken over again. So effectively you're, you're constantly ridding the game of, of enemies so you won't have any left. Yeah, this probably is to a address the issue that that, um, that stats were talking about earlier in two where it's really really annoying when they come back seconds later sometimes and i think this perhaps tips the balance the other way a bit maybe what they should do i think is have a, a crackdown style system where once you complete the game you can toggle to turn all the enemies back on again 
Oh, I, w- I was just going to ask if anybody had played multiplayer at all or the co-op. Uh, yeah, I've played some of the co-op. I haven't played any of the multiplayer. The co-op's actually challenging because it's difficult. It's very different to the single player because it is a set of channeled missions kind of in the Left 4 Dead kind of syndicate frame where you're you're barreling through places occasionally stopping to do other objectives but mostly shooting people Um, it's enjoyable but it's an odd use of the game engine and it it feels utterly different to the single player if you could get the game used for example or get it cheaply do you think it's worth buying the online pass for i think it's worth i mean i i really like the game and i think it's worth buying and playing and yeah no 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 no, for the co-op right um no how much would you pay for it for the game yeah so this isn't my idea this is a an idea i read on gwj games with jobs years ago where somebody came up with a reviewing system which was basically how much you'd be willing to pay for the game so how much would you pay for it sim um 30 pounds sterling 30 pounds sterling that's sorry that's like 75 percent new game value that's about 45 dollars what would you pay for it starts far cry Three with having not played it, I, I probably twenty bucks. Twenty dollars, lupus. Yeah, maybe forty, fifty. Okay, so still about the same ballpark, not full price, discounted a bit, um, and skeleton. Well, I paid forty eight dollars for it. I used my Meyer bucks. What what? And I feel like <laughs> I got a good deal because there is actually a lot of gameplay here, and I know that uh, I've been overly negative on the game just and i think it's because it has so much potential yeah yeah but then it kind of squanders some of it because there is so much about it that actually works and that's that's incredible like if you think about video games as just small little exciting moments strung together the very first time i stabbed a guy from behind and took his knife and threw it into the guy in front of him that was like one of my best gaming moments of this year well, of course, after you do it 20 times, it loses its luster. But the yeah. first time I did it, it was incredible. Um, and that's not the only thing, is it? I mean, there are a load of things like that in the game which make it really enjoyable. Yeah, exactly. So I would, I mean, I would have paid full price for it. I could recommend it to somebody for full price. I would just tell them, you know, up front, there are caveats. Like, don't yeah. listen to any of the dialogue at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> try, to, try to have your friend play through the missions, and then you just watch, and then just go do all the outposts and drive the cars off of hills. <laughs> what a recommendation. That's <laughs> not mute. Avoid storyline. Before I forget, you can turn. There's no independent volume control for the music. Yeah, it's either on or off. But there's one important scene where you meet a character who plays a uh, classical tune, and that's part of his shtick. But when you turn the music off, it turns off all the music. It's not just <laughs> ambient. It turns off music in cars, and it turns off his music as well. So he went to his record player, put it on, and went... <laughs> and started talking <laughs> about invisible music and waving his hands around. When you told me to turn the music off earlier today, I did. And for some reason, <laughs> the animals didn't make any sounds either. <laughs> <laughs> and before I restarted the game... <laughs> I was. I thought that the animal growls and stuff were somehow tied to the music in the game. But then I found out it was just a bug, and when I restarted it, it was fine. But it was funny, a bear coming at me, and just no sound coming out of it. Just, Ping pong got, bear. <laughs> mute, got white bear. White paint all over his face. Little <laughs> black circles around his eyes. <laughs> Striped usually, shirt. Usually Ping pong bear does sneak up quietly, though. <laughs>